library! We are gathered here today to pay final tribute to our dishonored dead. BioWare has officially shut down all further work on Anthem, the half-baked live service online game with bad loot that immediately bled out its player base and then was promised updates that would save the game. It is no more. Let us speak no more of it. And instead, let us turn our eyes to Marvel's Avengers, a half-baked live service online game with bad loot that immediately bled out its player base and is now being promised updates that will save the game. And the Anthem Deja Vu continues because my PS4 actively fought to keep me from playing Avengers. The game would not launch until I'd rebooted my system in safe mode, updates waited to install until in-game, whereupon the game hung up installing said updates, man all the Avengers except the Hawkeyes got bored and left, and the game crashed about half the time that I tried loading it up from suspended play. I've played so many bad games that my consoles are growing self-aware. The game begins with a big celebratory festival being thrown for the Avengers, which in this game consists solely of Captain America, Iron Man, Thor, Hulk, and Black Widow. Apparently more Avengers are being added in expansions, which makes this big festival only celebrating five of them look extraordinarily petty and dickish. Also, the first two heroes that they added in those expansions, Hawkeye and Hawkeye. Brilliant. The Avengers unveil a new power reactor that uses Terrigen crystals, and if you recognize the magic word from my Inhumans review, you know exactly where this is going. Bad guys attack, the reactor blows while the Avengers are occupied, and the Terrigen turns tons of people into Inhumans and gives them superpowers. That's what you get for putting the reactor on a helicarrier that crashes even more than this damn game does! Oh, and Captain America supposedly dies in this prologue, but considering they bothered to give him a playable moveset, and that DLC costumes were being hawked for him way before launch, and the fact he's one of the biggest pop culture icons around right now, who the hell actually bought that Cap was dead? Regardless, the Avengers are blamed for the disaster and forcibly disbanded, while one of their scientists, George Tarleton, vows to solve the Inhumans crisis with his new company, Advanced Idea Mechanics. Oh no! Not AIM! Not those boring ass, completely anonymous, all-purpose plot filler villains from the Iron Man licensed games! They suck! Cut to five years later and AIM basically rules the world as a cyberpunk dystopia. And yet, this was only the second most disappointing cyberpunk game of the year. The audience POV character is Kamala Khan, a young and peppy Avengers megafan who becomes an inhuman with the power to stretch and deform her body like Luffy from One Piece, eventually dubbing herself Miss Marvel. She finds evidence that AIM is corrupt and ends up on a quest to reunite the fractured Avengers to save the world once again. There was a big controversy of people outraged that a Muslim replaces Captain America because something something Iraq war veterans. That or their bigoted butt munches mad that a Muslim person exists, it's hard to tell these days. Marvel's Avengers is a pretty standard beat-em-up game. Mash square for light attacks, mash triangle for heavy attacks, circle to dodge, and shoulder buttons for ranged attacks, which is amusing for the Hulk who just rips chunks out of the floor to throw at his enemies. There are six playable characters because, again, spoiler, Captain America isn't actually dead. And frankly, all the characters play largely the same. They all have the same moves and combos, their attacks all do the same general thing, they all have basically the same super moves, charge attack, group buff, and super form, and a lot of their unlockable skills are the same too. They'll tend to have one unique ability apiece, like Hulk can grab people and smash them around, Thor can pin enemies by setting his hammer on them, and Widow has a grapple gun. Nothing that fundamentally changes how any of them play, though. The only character who does play uniquely is Iron Man, whose heavy attacks fire weapons with an energy meter that you have to manage. It's kind of like that good Iron Man Wii game I reviewed a while back, only if it had vastly clunkier controls and sucked. Everyone else, you just kind of charge in and mash buttons, and that's it. Frankly, I'm hard-pressed to come up with any big differences between Cap, Thor, and Hulk, even after grinding all three to unlock more of their abilities. Cap can block attacks barely, before the meter that lets you do so runs out. Cap's got melee combos that aren't any more effective than just button mashing. Thor can fly, but he's got no range. He doesn't use his thunder or weather powers for anything other than to buff basic hammer swing attacks. Are you Thor, the god of hammers? Apparently, yeah, he is, because that's all his moveset revolves around. 
And Black Widow plays a little differently because she gets three ranged weapons that let you mow down enemies with machine guns or snipe people with a big ass magnum, which I just found endlessly amusing that normal ass guns are on par with the powers of a Norse god of thunder and lightning and the rage giant who breaks planets in half. All of the game's enemies are basic soldiers with guns and robots that just run up to try and punch you, faceless goons that get dull and completely interchangeable really quickly. The big reason enemies are any remote threat to you is just due to a lot of fake difficulty. A lot of enemies are just tanks that take a crap load of hits to kill, are coated in frustrating everything proof shields, at times swarm you in massive numbers to where you're just screwed unless your ultimate move is ready, and they tend to just cheap shot shoot you to death from off screen. Plus none of the Avengers are particularly durable if you catch my drift. Most of the time it takes barely any hits to kill you. I made damn sure to keep Miss Marvel in my party at all times because she's the only team member with a group healing buff that you sorely need. The thing that continually drove me nuts is that a lot of the enemies will just decide they don't feel like flinching to your hits, they'll run through your attacks and smack you anyway. You're supposed to be able to press R2 to counter attacks Arkham Asylum style, but only certain attacks can be countered so the whole system feels like it barely works. Plus, a lot of the characters just have no answer to ranged enemies because using ranged attacks requires standing still and slowly throwing one projectile at one enemy at a time. This is why my favorite characters are the stretchy-limbed and nimble Miss Marvel and the ranged-focused Iron Man and Black Widow, because ranged combat is your best friend in a game where it's a coin toss whether your hits actually work or not. Maybe you had different results, I'm sure I'll be drowning in comments that I suck at the game that has infinite lives and regular checkpoints, I'm just relaying my experience of all the Avengers feeling weak. The game is trying to ride the coattails of the looter-shooter genre, so your characters will constantly get gear drops in the middle of levels and for completing certain missions. Except unlike in Anthem, where components gave you special powers and a lot of weapons work differently, so you would develop kind of a favorite loadout and playstyle, all the gear in Marvel's Avengers is just bland stat boosts. It's not even always clear what the stat boosts do. What the hell is the heroic rating? Do you know what does it mean? You just pick the gear with the biggest numbers. I hear it's not until you hit the level cap that gear actually matters for determining your character builds. The only concrete new abilities your gear ever grants are stupid shit like PARTIALLY INFLICT A STATUS AILMENT THAT WON'T EVEN KICK IN BEFORE ANY OF THE ENEMIES DIE, AND 15% CHANCE TO REFILL A LITTLE BIT OF A METER IF YOU LAND A CRITICAL HIT COMBO FINISHER. STUPID CRAP LIKE THAT. Plus, the game usually scales up enemies to meet your own power level, so you really only have the game's word for it that grinding a character is actually making them stronger. It sure as hell doesn't feel like it most of the time, and since your character's stats are tied heavily to gear drops, you're pretty much at the random number generator's mercy whether or not grinding a character will actually make them any stronger. I got Miss Marvel and Cap geared up pretty much right away, but I had to grind Iron Man for a few hours to get halfway decent equipment, and getting any remotely useful gear for the Hulk was like pulling teeth. The only reliable way to get good gear is to buy it from shield and resistance stores, both of which have a pitiful selection unless you spend untold hours doing side objectives for both of them to increase your standing. So, more grind! Plus, in Anthem, the gear is kinda universal. Most of the guns and components can be equipped to multiple javelins. Gear is not interchangeable in Avengers, you only get equipment drops for the one character that you're using, extending the game's grind as you have to play every single character in turn to get them all powered up from scratch. On the bright side, I now have positive things to say about Anthem. Apparently it didn't miss the mark as badly as it could have. It's also kind of creepy that because the Hulk doesn't really wear any equipment, all of his gear drops are bones. Did he rip out someone's spinal cord to jam into himself? The gates of hell are filled with the screams of his victims. Oh, never mind, they're actually nanites that were just lying around in a chest somewhere that Bruce jammed right into his bone marrow. No wonder he's so pissed off all the time. That's pretty much the game. You run through a level that's either a big empty forest or one of a thousand aim laboratories. You kill a bunch of robots and soldiers by punching them. You get some crappy gear that may or may not ostensibly make you slightly stronger. And then you go to the next anonymous aim laboratory and do it all again. There are no... 
I repeat, no supervillains in the game apart from Taskmaster and Abomination, both of whom only appear in the game's intro and then sporadically in the post game. The main villain of the campaign is Modok, a long running joke villain whose only real presence in the game is to explain why there are so damn many robots and to be the pathetic final boss. The entire game is just endlessly repeated identical generic laboratory rooms filled with endlessly copy pasted identical generic generic robots. The boss battles are anonymous walker and helicopter mechs. There was just no creativity here. No effort in so many arenas where it counted. Absolutely no creative use of the license or any of the shit that you want to see from an Avengers game. I may not like the Ultimate Alliance games, but I can at least see the appeal in having so many characters, both heroes and villains, thrown together in an epic, massive scale of a story, not just six interchangeable adults punching out anonymous robots for 12 hours. And this is where we come to the ultimate tragedy that is this game. The story campaign of Marvel's Avengers is not bad. The narrative is good and the combat is bland but passable, if this had been worked into a single player release, it probably could have been decent or even good. But top to bottom, this game has been kneecapped by forcing it into a live service mold, dumbing down and homogenizing its content to suit a big online multiplayer game that it had no business trying to be. Granted, when I say that the game's story campaign is pretty good, there's a buttload of asterisks attached because the story is really uneven and unfocused. Regardless of all the bad that I have to say about this game, Miss Marvel and her storyline are really damn good. By sheer random chance, Kamala is an Inhuman, in a society where Inhumans have no rights just because a corporation said so, having to keep her nature a secret or else be hunted by robots because we weren't allowed to use Sentinels. The game really sells the oppression of AIM's rule, and they spew propaganda everywhere that Kamala and her kind are diseased, dangerous, and must be purged for the good of the world. Propaganda that we know is bullshit, but everybody else believes. We feel the heartbreak of this once bright-eyed sweet girl getting beaten down by a society that's being told to hate her just for existing. Being told day in and day out that she's literally subhuman, and being the subject of fear from anybody who finds out what she is. She's forced on the run and has a moment of brutal sadness, realizing that she can't go back to her family, who will be punished for her simply being. But when she's cornered by AIM and fights back, finding joy by embracing what makes her different, it's a triumphant moment of discovering her own power. Throughout the story, as she meets and gets pulled in with the Avengers, these larger-than-life heroes, she's constantly torn between embracing her lifelong dream and crushing self-doubt at the responsibility, but it's a calling that she can't turn away from because her people, the other Inhumans, are counting on her both as a hero and as a symbol. Even her new teammates aren't immune to the bigotry as Bruce regularly slips up and calls her a mistake. And when she discovers that AIM might have an actual cure for being an inhuman, despite her newfound pride in what she is, she grapples with whether or not she should take it for the good of everybody else around her. Kamala's story is very personal, filled with social subtext, and uplifting as we see her optimism restore the spark of hope in an oppressive world. So, you know, let's keep shoving the actual interesting character to the background because we have five other boring protagonists who need to share the spotlight. By the way, if Kamala's storyline feels like it should be an X-Men story, it's because this game was probably being written when Marvel was pushing the Inhumans as an X-Men replacement. An initiative that failed miserably and was called off two years before this game launched. Kamala hacks an AIM server and finds out Tarleton, who's mutating a giant head because shut up, may have purposefully killed Captain America, so she flees her home in search of the Resistance. Instead, she just finds the Hulk sulking around a crashed helicarrier until she guilts and nags him into joining her quest. The ensuing forced Hulk tutorial is where you fight the Abomination, who keeps emitting clouds of B.O. that damage you by touch, so that you're forced to slowly whittle down his health with Hulk's crappy ranged attacks. And literally the only reason Abomination is in the story is so Tarleton can choke him out and establish that he's for serious, yo. They need to find Iron Man to get the rest of AIM's data, so you spend like two hours tracking down Jarvis and tracking down parts for Jarvis before finally recruiting Iron Man. Except Tony doesn't have any suits, so you spend more filler levels raiding AIM bases for the Iron Man parts before the plot can get going again. Yeah, quick side note. Been playing almost four hours. 
still only have three playable Avengers. Because when you hear Avengers game, you think spend almost the entire game just tracking down the members before the team actually does anything. Tony and Bruce also argue over the Terrigen reactor because they're both racked with immense guilt over its failure, which is a pretty good scene. Too bad this fundamentally makes absolutely no sense, but we'll get to that later. You spend a few levels looking for helicarrier parts, then you find a resistance base led by Hank Pym. Former Ant-Man because Aim monkeyed with his genetics to where he can't change size anymore. Oh well, Scott Lang is the more famous Ant-Man anyway. Scott doesn't beat his wife. You spend a few levels breaking into AIM lab stealing research that leads nowhere. Kamala meets some mopey dude Dante who is never mentioned again, and he guilts her into trying to raid a base solo and getting captured. So FINALLY! Two thirds of the way into the campaign, and having not been mentioned for several hours, Black Widow shows up! Yeah, Widow is literally the only Avenger who's actually been trying to stop AIM the last five years, because Hulk was busy squatting, Iron Man was busy bombing in a desert, and Thor... They don't even bother to explain him. It turns out that AIM is actually run by a scientist named Monica. No, really, some anonymous lab coat named Monica, with no motivation or plan, is the actual main villain of the friggin' Avengers! She's been putting in human powers into robots called Adaptoids. Not a word of explanation why, and Black Widow is able to easily kill said Adaptoids by just shooting them in the face. Tough fight. We could be in trouble. Tough fight? It went down to normal bullets! Call the Punisher! Problem solved! The game pushes that Black Widow is meant to be played as a nimble brawler, the game seemingly unaware of how suicidal and lopsided the melee combat is, so you have a boss fight with Monica in a big scary robot suit that I killed by just shooting it in the face. And this is why you don't have some boring ass anonymous scientist as your main villain! You rescue Kamala, but then AIM attacks the helicarrier to try and crash it into a city, but then THOR finally shows up to save the day! At long last, after HOURS on end of the story spinning its wheels doing absolutely nothing, the Avengers have finally reassembled! And then Bruce and Tony have another fight over the reactor, and they all split up again! OH COME ON! And when Kamala pieces together that AIM has a lab in space and gives a big epic pep talk, only Tony and Bruce come back. Yeah, 78% campaign completion and I still only have half the adventures! This is like if you made a Ninja Turtles game and Leonardo and Michelangelo just didn't exist until the last two levels. You just can't do that! You spend some more unabashed filler levels getting parts for Tony to make a suit that can go to space, and in the space lab he finds Captain America! Wow, Cap's alive. Well done. Audience totally did not see that coming. But I will admit that Cap and Tony's reunion is a really good scene. Tony? Are you hugging me? What? No, I just didn't want you to fall. Then why aren't you letting go? In fact, Tony is so happy to see Cap again that he learned how to do ventriloquism. <laughs> you know, it takes a lot of talent to gasp for air without opening your mouth. The whole game, Monica has been injecting Tarleton and Inhumans with a regeneration formula, basically just to see what happens, and the formula, it turns out, is Cap Blood. Except Tarleton really hates the Avengers because their reactor ruined his life, so when he finds out about it, he kills Monica. Only not really because she somehow shows up after the credits perfectly fine! Oh, and Tarleton is calling himself MODOK now completely out of nowhere, not even explaining what the acronym means, which you'd think just abruptly giving himself a stupid ass name like Mechanized Organism Designed Only for Killing would garner something of an explanation. So fucking finally, the Avengers have reassembled.
they don't join back together because they made amends for past deeds, grew as people, or set aside their differences for the common good, they reunite because Captain America is their Jesus. But whatever! The game's been spinning its wheels for something like 10 hours, they're finally ready to take the fight to aim and liberate the world from tyranny. As soon as you spend a few hours grinding random filler missions gathering materials for Tony to make endgame suits. Yeah, by the time the Avengers reassembled, there are only two story missions left, so the game adds its own Tombs of the Legionnaires objectives so that you can use Cap, Thor, and Widow for more than five minutes. Well, since the game itself has stopped to take a nap, I might as well use this opportunity to discuss the plot hole. The inciting incident of the game is that the Avengers made an experimental reactor that blew up and caused a ton of devastation. It splits up the Avengers, who question whether they should have so much power when they're clearly reckless with said power, and it creates MODOK, who wants to destroy all superpowered beings because he thinks that power of any kind will inherently bring destruction and corruption. That is the foundation for a really good story. Except there are three little plot points that collapse the entire argument and completely kneecap whatever theme the game is trying to have. For one, the game spends its entire length blaming the Avengers for making the bad reactor, except the Avengers did not build the Terrigen reactor! MODOK did! Hulk was trying to fix it! So MODOK spends the entire game bitching and moaning that his own invention failed because of the PR department! For two, the reactor was not supposed to come online on A-Day because the Avengers knew that it wasn't ready. Monica hired mercenaries and hijacked the reactor for her stupid ass experiments. So again, not the Avengers' fault! They were being careful and responsible! And three, it's not enough that the reactor failed on accident, it has to fail on accident! So we find out the reactor only went screwy because it just happened to turn on above a buried alien Kree robot, which further just happened to be buried on a fault line that would have obliterated cities if Cap hadn't blown the reactor. Again, something that none of the Avengers could have possibly predicted or prepared for. So this entire game's story hinges on blaming the Avengers for a catastrophe that on three different levels is not their fault! What are meant to be heart-wrenching scenes of friends fighting turns into screaming at your TV that they're fighting over bullshit. The villain that's meant to be a well-intentioned extremist turns into a pathetic baby whining that his own problems are someone else's fault. I'm guessing these were last-second rewrites because Tarleton being the reactor's actual inventor and villains hijacking the reactor are never, ever mentioned by the main heroes, like they threw in these two isolated exposition scenes way late to make the Avengers more unambiguously heroic. Whatever the case, the plot threads that don't directly pertain to Miss Marvel completely crumble to dust as a result. And that's when the game can be bothered to have a story at all, because if you hadn't noticed, about half of the plot is freaking filler. Whatever, the Avengers discovered that MODOK has developed a gas that's lethal to inhumans. Yeah, sucks when that happens to your people, don't it? And they somehow find MODOK's lair to stop him before he can deploy the gas worldwide. I'm not worried about the final level, though. I've got Miss Marvel geared and leveled way the hell up. This will be a piece of... Oh, you're forced to play the final stage as Captain America, who you don't unlock until the very end, who I've barely used, and whose moveset kinda sucks without extensive leveling. Little heads up would have been nice. In case I haven't made it abundantly clear, MODOK is a garbage villain. He just sits in a chair half-heartedly flinging projectiles at you while just deciding that he hasn't taken any damage as the Avengers whoop his ass one by one. On the bright side, Thor shouldn't have any difficulty going for the head this time. I just... Really? This is who you picked for the main villain? You could have used Ultron, Loki... Thanos, Kang the Conqueror, Doctor Doom, Galactus, the Dread Dormammu, any combination thereof. And you went with the guy who just looks and acts like a giant baby who's only a threat because he hides behind a half dozen everything-proof shields. 
Eventually, Modok tries to kill the Avengers with a giant Kree robot, but Kamala learns to believe in herself and she embiggens to take it down, defeating Modok once and for all. Kamala returns home to reunite with her dad, fully understanding and supportive of her new life and identity, and the game ends with her being sworn in as an Avenger. We didn't actually stop AIM. The world is still run by an oppressive genocidal dictatorship. We didn't clear the Avengers' name and everyone still thinks they're evil. Tony doesn't have his company back. We didn't free the captive inhumans that AIM's been keeping for experiments. We didn't even stop the real villain because Monica is the one who's actually been running AIM this whole time and she's still at large. Really, we didn't accomplish a single damn thing because crapsack online service games think that you need a static, unbreaking status quo so that players can plug away at the same missions indefinitely, achieving nothing for the rest of time. Yay. Because Marvel's Avengers is a half-baked live service, aka diet MMO game, you're expected to keep playing it long after you've finished the solo campaign. So what is there to do after you complete the main story? Basically nothing! You see that counter of 34 missions to pick from in the corner? It sounds like an impressive number. It's not! A dozen of those missions are training stages for the assorted characters, another dozen are side missions that I've already completed and can just play again unmodified and don't really cycle out at all, another six or so are drop zones, aka really short levels that don't give shit for rewards, and the rest are really high level gauntlets or modded story missions that are way above your power level and gated off until you've done a crap load of grind. You run out of post-game things to do really damn quickly. Just play the same small handful of levels over and over again, fighting the same copy-pasted robots in the same copy-pasted laboratory environments, slowly leveling up all your characters so that you can continue playing the exact same levels over and over again. All to eventually gain access to a few pointless high-level missions where you punch stronger clones of the same robots in the same levels over and over again. These games just feel entitled to limitless amounts of your time with nothing in return. There is no storyline or endgame here. You're expected to keep playing Marvel's Avengers just for the sake of having played Marvel's Avengers. They try to add some structure with little objectives for S.H.I.E.L.D. and the Resistance to increase your rankings and unlock more gear to buy, but it's just another form of grind, the gear is boring anyway, and the stores are only made necessary because in-level loot drops SUCK! They have released two free story expansions at time of recording, but they both eat. The Kate Bishop expansion is just beating up the same robots and the same walker boss in the same identical labs for three hours while barely any story happens. Seriously. Zero new additions to the gameplay, just normal missions again. You find out AIM is working on time travel and Hawkeye's involved, you rescue him and he tells you an invasion by the Kree is coming, and then it ends. The first big expansion is just a three hour long trailer for the Hawkeye expansion. And how is the much hyped Hawkeye expansion about a dystopian future? Are you excited to battle alien invaders in an epic struggle for the fate of the world? Well, eat shit! You just run around a big empty desert for three hours fighting more of the same damn AIM robots while Hawkeye has a sad about all those memes calling him the useless Avenger. I'm not friggin' joking. Same enemies, empty levels, and no story. You don't actually fight the Kree, you just spend the entire expansion looking for Nick Fury only to find he's frozen in time by the Cosmic Cube. You head home not having accomplished shit because apparently Hawkeye not leaving the Avengers is all it takes to stop the invasion. They completely copped out of the big new story that they teased for hours, and this huge hyped expansion is a big pile of nothing. The expansions are also way buggier than the base game, with rampant frame rate drops and glitches. Exhibit A, Kate's final boss freezing still so I can pound it to death. Exhibit B, Hawkeye's final boss freezing still so I can pound it to death. Oh yeah, you fight Evil Hulk because nerds cream themselves when you reference Old Man Logan.
No new villains added to either expansion either, just more endless waves of AIM robots! The expansions do add two new playable characters, but in my opinion, they're both just kinda lousy. I swear Kate is just a glorified reskin of Black Widow with worse weapons! The game establishes that Kate can teleport with a stolen AIM device, she doesn't actually use it for anything except the platforming, and Kate is a profoundly unlikable character. She plays like a parody of disaffected, aloof millennials who's sarcastic and flippant about everything, with an infuriating chip on her shoulder and high horse about how she wasn't forced into hiding for five years. She gets better after Captain America goes to tell her that she's right about everything because apparently the brat just needed attention, and she's still an ass when Cap gives her everything that she wanted. You've proved you're an Avenger, Kate. If you'll have us. When I was a kid, I dreamed of hearing you say that. I also dreamed of flying a plane made of gumballs. Just say thank you and shut the hell up! You're forced to bring her along for every single mission in both expansions, by the way. I can appreciate that they at least tried to make Hawkeye play differently than the other characters, but between time bomb arrows, boomerang arrows, a vastly worse party heal than Miss Marvel's, and a charge special that fires from above and hits nothing, one time they tried to make a hero actually play differently, he just kinda plays like garbage. Though I do like that his ultimate move is to fire Yondu's arrow that just flies around hitting people, that was a very nice touch. Also, both expansions claim that they each have 12 missions, which implies they combine to being longer than the base campaign. Puh! <laughs> lies! Each expansion is six story missions advertised as 12. Ah, but that still leaves one Avenger in the game that I still haven't talked about. Spider-Man! After all, it was announced long before the game's launch that Spider-Man would be coming exclusively to the PlayStation versions of the game. So would you like to know how Spider-Man plays? So would I, because he's been delayed indefinitely. Seriously, Spider-Man was announced to be released in early 2021, only for it to be announced in February that he's been moved to sub-time in 2021, with no other updates across the seven months since the game's been released. Oh, they released a trailer for a Black Panther expansion. Data miners claim that She-Hulk, Winter Soldier, Captain Marvel, and War Machine are next in line. But not so much as a peep about the guy who was actually advertised to show up. Also, in case you hadn't heard, the Hawkeye expansion added more to the game than just a useless character and some crappy missions. The Hawkeye expansion also extended the game's grind. By the time I finished the story campaign, I had Miss Marvel at level 12, Iron Man at level 8, everyone else around level 5 or 6. The level cap is 50. That is a metric crap load of grind that you're meant to do for each character, and on March 18th, 2021, it got crap loadier. As of the Hawkeye expansion, the game is now rigged so that characters level up much slower once you hit level 25. The official explanation from Square Enix is that leveling up in the game is too mind-bendingly complicated and forcibly slowing down progression is all for the player's benefit. Even though literally all you do when you level up is pick a new move or buff from a skill tree, something players have been perfectly capable of doing for decades! Square Enix's defense for screwing you over is they think you're too stupid to realize it. But I never taught you to lie. That's why you're so bad at it. So here's the million dollar question. Why is a game that's already lambasted for being too boring making itself even more boring? Because corporate says they need to keep you forcibly engaged with the game longer to increase the odds that you'll dump more money into it. I haven't done this for a game before and I didn't do it for Anthem, but let's just take a quick look at all the bullshit you're expected to pay money for on top of the 60 bucks you ostensibly paid for the game in the first place. I'm an engineer. I get a kick out of seeing the intricate mechanical designs of Iron Man's assorted armors, so let's look at his alternate costumes. This one here costs 1400 units, which you barely earn in-game, so you pretty much have to pay real-world money for it. The exchange rate is a pretty consistent 100 units equals $1, so this one armor costs $14. For one costume of one character in one video game. 
The combined total of all Iron Man's monetized skins, $74. More than the game itself. And that's just for one character. Is your favorite Avenger Thor? $88 for his costumes, please. I have a group of friends on Twitter that really admire Black Widow in the MCU movies. Gotta slap a horny tax on that ass. $123 for Widow's costumes, please. In fact, if we take the combined cost of all the hero suits, subtract the piddly amount of credits you can earn in-game, and add on the $10 the game charges you to unlock the challenge cards for the DLC characters, the bare minimum additional cash you need to blow for all the content is $583, more than the price of an entire console. And this number might not even be comprehensive depending on how the shop works. I didn't look at it for an extended period of time. And rumors abound that they're finally going to add the much-demanded suits from the movies! And charge extra for them, too. And blow me, as I record this, news is breaking that even more new monetized suits are being added on top of all this. And that's not even getting into all the stupid-ass emotes, nameplates, or special takedowns that push the price well over 600 bucks if you give a shit. Really makes you miss Marvel's Spider-Man that gave you like 30 suits for free and then added more suits for free and they weren't just crappy palette swaps like half the costumes here are. And that's just the stuff you have to pay for. Most of the remaining suits are locked behind patterns, which I have no idea how you get, and the rest are locked behind the hero challenge card. What's the hero challenge card? Well, every character has two daily challenges and two weekly challenges hidden away in some menu, and completing them gets you points towards a list of unlockables with costumes and the one in-game place you can get credits. However, should you decide that this challenge card that's deliberately designed to take forever is taking forever, you can pay money to skip levels of it. One dollar per skipped level, 40 levels in total, with eight different characters sporting eight different sets of challenges, and having to pay 10 bucks to even unlock said challenge card if you don't have a launch edition of the game. And remember, Black Panther's in the pipeline, so all these costs for completion are still going up. Marvel's Avengers is a frustrating game because you can see the potential that it might have had if corporate dicks hadn't been stuck into it. The narrative has flashes of some really good stuff, the story could have had themes of power and responsibility, the combat could have made the Avengers come to life more and had actual interesting enemies, and the game could have been a satisfying experience. But everything has been so watered down, homogenized, or made pointlessly grindy and frustrating because someone just decided this had to be an online game. Because apparently just making and selling a video game based on one of the biggest pop culture's phenomena of the age wasn't enough to be profitable. It had to be a half-assed online game ducking out of a satisfying ending in exchange for bludgeoning you with pointless grind for all eternity. And you know what? I'm not even opposed to an online multiplayer Avengers game, but it needs more to do than just beating up stupid robots in stupid labs in the same dozen or so stupid levels. The game is fundamentally broken, and the expansions, tacking on three hours of blatantly phoned-in story content at a time, is not solving any problems. Adding more characters to grind for is not going to fix anything. Although, admittedly, if the Captain Marvel DLC pans out, Sean will probably buy a copy. A lot of viewers said they were excited to hear me talk about the game's production like I did with Anthem and X-Men Destiny. People were eager to hear about Avengers' big scandal. Thing is, though, there wasn't one. I couldn't find a single word about the game's development going off the rails or having any problems. It's just a corporate greed-fueled focus-tested game trying to jump on bandwagons that turned out exactly the way it was intended. Well, everything went according to plan until the game lost 96% of its player base within weeks of launch and is dogged with rumors that it still hasn't recouped its development costs. People continue to hold out hope that Marvel's Avengers will get fixed and miraculously transform into a brilliant game because it was published by Square Enix. Because as people will point out en masse, Square Enix managed to salvage the disastrous launch of Final Fantasy XIV, they can do it again. Thing is though, as people pointed out in the comments on the Anthem review, Final Fantasy XIV was a fluke.
The dev team didn't fix Final Fantasy XIV, they killed it entirely, and then a brand new director with a laser-focused vision and with keen insight on how to manipulate Square Enix's corporate system managed to squirrel away enough resources and crunch to get an entirely new game out quickly bearing the Final Fantasy XIV name. People need to stop raising Final Fantasy XIV as the gold standard of post-launch support for broken games. It was lightning in a bottle, born under insanely specific circumstances that will not be replicated for the vast majority of releases. Everyone said that Anthem might get better. The dev team swore that Anthem was going to get fixed, only to find out that they only had a skeleton crew working on Anthem's updates and it died on its ass with no fanfare. Just like dozens of big abandoned online games from major studios before it. Will Marvel's Avengers approve? I obviously can't say for certain whether the game is doomed or... The hell did all these red flags come from? But at the end of the day, it doesn't matter whether Marvel's Avengers improves and rebounds or not. The real lesson we should take from Anthem's failure is that you don't buy a game for what it might theoretically be at some hypothetical point in the future, and you don't support a game off of fickle promises that can be broken on a whim. You buy the game for what it is now. And right now, Marvel's Avengers just kinda sucks. Well deserving of its new home among the... TERRORS OF THE LIBRARY!